Secret Invasion! Oh yes, this is the first season, this is episode 5, but it's called Harvest. Now, usually whenever I think of something Harvest, uh, immediately it talks about, well the literal definition of Harvest is a gathering of crops that have been planted. So when I hear Harvest, I immediately thought genetic harvesting. Okay. And I was thinking like maybe there's like some kind of like amalgamated creature made from um, different superpower being or beings, okay? Because the, remember the Frost Beast, which I do believe is that creature that was running around, was it New York or wherever, um, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Jane Foster, right. Wherever her apartment is, this monster was like running around chasing birds at the end of Thor The Dark World. So when I thought of Harvest, I immediately thought back to an old Incredible Hulk storyline called Piecemeal, which was a, a composite creature. It was part Hulk, I think it was part Sasquatch. And the Red Skull was in charge of this like, like agency that was responsible for the creation of Piecemeal. So when I saw the term Harvest, I thought maybe something along those lines, you know, a creature that is maybe made from different Avenger DNA, who knows? Uh, like I said, different superpowered creatures or aliens that have been on Earth, okay? So, really good episode. I, I gotta say that off the top. Uh, I'm gonna give it a grade right now. A. This episode is an A. Solid episode from beginning to end. I was invested at the end of this episode and it ended perfectly. Hope I remember to, uh, you know, retrace my steps as to what happened exactly at the end of the episode because usually I just go with the flow you know what I mean that's why I gave the grade kind of randomly it's like whenever I can remember to do it I do it but I'm really looking forward to next week okay and I think my anticipation has really built builds it it's really building okay for this episode drawbacks same drawbacks we're seeing a lot of scrolls and new scrollos without another human in sight, and they're in human form. I'm tired of that baloney that they just stay in their shell. Why? It does not feel like, an, uh, it's just my opinion, it does not feel like an alien invasion when, when they're all gathered together, they're looking like regular people. Gravik assembles his officers and for some reason, the black guy with the furry Russian hat on is an officer immediately. So, now I do know, I think, was it two episodes ago that he volunteered to go on a mission to be a part of the Royal Navy, you know, to blend in with the Royal Navy. That's when they're going to shoot down that UN uh, plane with a service to air missile from a submarine that I said looked like a, a Mosasaurus from Jurassic World. So he's an officer right away, okay? It's this big warehouse and everyone's in human form. That annoyed me. Why are you in human form? So, what was his name, Pagan? He was supposed to steal something I don't remember because like I've only watched these once, these episodes. Now, the episodes are worthy enough to, to watch a second time. I just haven't watched it, okay? He was supposed to steal something, okay? And his body, this is an important thing, okay? It's not me nitpicking, but his body language is saying, I'm not on your side. His body language is saying that. Now maybe that's just the perspective of the camera. Like we're looking at it from the, you know, a, we're at home watching this and Gravik is already like probably inside, but he's like lingering, he's frowning, he's looking up. His body language is saying, I got a problem with you Gravik. And it could build to something. That's what his body language is conveying. So he comes in, Gravik's on this really high platform addressing everybody. He said, if you would have stole what you were supposed to steal or whatever, I think he said the president would have been killed. And then the guy shoots back and says, why didn't you kill Fury when you had the chance? Which I thought immediately. I was like, why didn't he kill Fury? He, he had him like lined up perfectly. He could have killed him right then and there. And Gravik says something along the lines of, well, we, we find out later why. Okay. But Gravik says something along the lines, we have Fury right where we want him or something. And Pagan, I think his name was, starts running off at the mouth. Talking about, you know, maybe you ain't the man that should be leading this delegation in so many words. And Gravik Super Scrolls, kind of like Martian Manhunter, creates these long tendrils from his arms, just impales him. <laughs> and the new officer watches this. 
And he's like, again, his body language is conveying to us, the audience. Maybe Graphic isn't paying attention or he's just preoccupied with, you know, being mean. <laughs> okay. And his, his body language is saying, I didn't like that. Or this was a mistake. Bad move, Gravik. That, that's what his body language is conveying. So it's obvious to us at home. Okay. So uh, he murders the guy. He tells another scroll that's there, some some woman that maybe has been in it earlier, but I didn't recognize her. He says, tell, I don't remember the person's name, okay. Oh, oh Rody, right. He said, get a message to Rody. Give him the location of New Scrawless. Use it as leverage. He says, basically, he says, the scrolls here know that it's about sacrifice. So they're, they're going to get nuked or something, okay? And I guess some of them know, others don't. I don't know. Nick Fury approaches. He Well, he brings the president in, you know, after the president. Was the president shot? Or was he just in a car accident? That's why he was like an ICU. He's been rushed inside. He parks his chair right outside of where the uh, president is being operated on. I think the president was in the ICU with his pistol. So Rhodey comes in. Nick Fury assails him, kind of pushes, pushes him against the wall. I think he holds a gun to him. Adios. Do you really expect me to not push you up against the wall, B.I.? There's a scroll or not with the arm in a sling. Again, I've only seen those episodes once. But I'm thinking, I said, just shoot him. He'll turn into a scroll. So for some reason, again, for some reason Nick Fury doesn't shoot him then and there. And Rhodey says in 60 seconds your face is going to be all over the news as the murderer of Maria Hill. So I don't know why he left Rhodey alive. Okay. So as he's walking out, all these like Secret Service men come up and he's like, this is a, only a taste, Fury, or whatever. So then he's like, you're gonna be most, the most wanted person in the world, everyone will hate you. So Nick Fury rolls out. Then we see Olivia Coleman. She goes to a laboratory that looks like a home. And there's a couple there. And I love Li Olivia Coleman. Sonia Fallsworth, okay. She's very smug, very British, <laughs> okay. When one of the scrolls threatens to kill the other scroll, if he, you know, if she divulges any information, he's like, we're not gonna betray graphic. Sonya Fallsworth just pulls out a pistol and just shoots him in his head. Boom! Like you're supposed to. And he turns into a scroll for everybody to see. So I was thinking, like, now why didn't Nick Fury do that? And remember, Nick Fury is, like, the real deal. He's, like, a super spy. He's ahead of everybody. Even, like, the Avengers, so to speak. The superheroes. So then they're trying to figure out what is Gravik talking about about the Harvest. And Nick Fury explains to, I think, Sonya Fallsworth. Because he goes to one of his graves, you know, he has fake graves all over the place, which is basically like a, a cache, you know, weapons cache and like probably equipment. He goes to one in Finland along with Sonya Fallsworth. He explains that for the Battle of Earth, which I believe was Endgame, I think. All right. I don't think it's referring to New York, but I think it's about the uh, Endgame. He says that every Avenger spilt blood, including Carol Danvers, who is um, Captain Marvel. He said, I sent in people to collect as much DNA as possible, and they were scrolls apparently. And he said, the leader of that operation was Gravik. So that's how Gravik even knows about the harvest. So Gravik is kind of trying to leverage Nick Fury to bring him the Avengers DNA all in one vial, and including, including excuse me, uh, Captain Marvel, because I don't think she's an Avenger officially. So it's all in one vial, hidden inside of Nick Fury's gravestone. And that's what Gravik wants, to create Super Scrolls. Now, my issue is multiple Super Scrolls, to me, that cheapens the unique Super Scroll character. But, but guess what? I don't care. Because this is very well done. All right? This storyline is great. All right? So, a lot of, maybe not as much action, but great dialogue scenes. And again, something else that I just didn't understand. When Gaia went to talk to Nick Fury's wife, I don't remember her name, Dr. Priscilla, something like that. Dr. Priscilla. They're having a chit chat. They're burning Talos' body, Return of the Jedi style, you know, with Luke burned Darth Vader's body after he died. I'm like, why are you still in human form? <laughs> why? why are you still in human form? Then he go back to her, the home of Fury. Still in human form. And Gaia says, why did you want to stay here when you knew the assassins would come for you? She's like, oh, I always love this house. 
No sooner are the now she said something along those lines. No sooner are the words out of her, her mouth that gunfire comes in. Boo boo. <laughs> I'm like, uh, maybe you shouldn't stay there. So the assassins come in human form. I'm like, why? Why is there no scroll technology on this planet? You mean to tell me the scroll homeworld was destroyed? And again, I didn't see Captain Marvel. And they didn't bring any weapons? They're gonna etch a inch, what do you call it? They're gonna like scratch out a new life on this planet and didn't bring any of their equipment except fruit? Come on, why don't they have any like lasers or whatever? But anyway. Again, maybe that'll just make it too science fiction and they want to be grounded like Mission Impossible. Again, a lot of Falcon and the, uh, the Winter Soldier vibes, but it's still good. Okay, but, but I'm, just, I'm just wondering, I'm like, why, 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 why? Human assassins to kill two scrolls in human form. There's nothing alien to this. All right. So Nick Fury calls Gravit or whatever. And Gravit's saying, bring me the vial. Or Rhodey's gonna nuke, have the president nuke new scrolls. All right. And then they put on the news feed that the scrolls are on hum on Earth on human soil, working with the Russians. Because remember, the idea is for World War Three to happen between the United States and Russia. And when Nick, when uh, Colonel Rhodes, who is a scroll, runs this past the president, the president's like, "A nuclear strike on Russian soil? No way." And then Rhodey gave a really corny like response: "I'd rather be in World War Three than be extinct." I'm like, World War III could bring about extinction there, Rhodey. So bad line. But I know what he meant. But maybe it could have been written a little better. One thing I really love, the fact that Samuel L. Jackson is all over this series. That's one thing I like. And that's one thing that I was reticent about. I was like, I hope Samuel L. Jackson is really going to be in this. He's really in the series. Okay. What we can what can we take from this, uh, this great episode, episode five, Harvest? Gravik needs Nick Fury alive, and now we find out why. Because remember, he's just looking at Fury in the first one, and he's like, boom, and blew the place up. He specifically did not want to kill Nick Fury, okay? But he's been leveraging Fury this entire series to get the vial of the harvest to create super scrolls. And we've seen that Gravik is a very totalitarian person. He's willing to destroy, decimate the entire colony just to have his way. Scary. And then a lot of the scrolls, they outright rebel against them, which he couldn't see, but you could see as the audience because they're like reading people's body language. And they like wrap a bag around his head. I'm like, very human, you know, like they're like hitting him with stuff and like trying to like, it's like a hardcore match from the Attitude Era, <laughs> era of the WWF. And he turns into a scroll form. Nobody else does. They just look like a bunch of humans being beaten up by an alien. He bodies them. He comes down and says, who wants some? I'm like, very human of you, Gravity. So, as I said, not a lot of action, but the drama is really building. The episode ended with Nick Fury donning his long leather trench coat and the eye patch. All right. He left his wedding ring on for some reason. And I was hoping he would get that rid of that hat and just, but when you're Nick Fury and you look like Nick Fury and you're in your standard Nick Fury garb, uh, I don't know what a difference a hat is going to make because it's on site. When the whole world is looking for you and you're going to face the whole world in your typical garb, Nick Fury is ready for war. And he gave a kind of a milk toast response to uh, Sonya Fallsworth as to why she don't call down any of his super powered friends or whatever. And he's like, because I've lived lives different from them. And he's like, I, I know things that they, that they don't. He said, this is personal. Which is whack. Okay. They, they did, he should have just said, we didn't have it in the budget. <laughs> okay. But he basically said that we don't need to count on superheroes to solve all of our problems. I mean, you have super villains. Well, I mean, that would kind of even it out. Wouldn't that end it quicker? But who cares? It's still a great series. Okay. So this has been my recap, my recall, my retort, my review of episode five, Harvest from Secret Invasion. The series on Disney Plus. Comment. Please have, leave a dissertation if you need to so we can talk about this. We can discuss different aspects of the plot. 
What is your feelings, your thoughts towards the Secret Invasion storyline, this series? Again, to me, each episode has escalated. It's gotten better with time, and I think that's that's a great formula. All right, and I don't know if it's a 12 episodes or eight, 10, whatever, but I'm on board. I'm really invested now. It started slow, and I don't have a problem with it starting slow, but the, the tone was just off to me because I, I really couldn't get past the Falcon and the Winter Soldier vibes. But anyway, this has been The Great Experience by JohnBat426, and I can't wait to see you guys next Wednesday for Episode 6 of Secret Invasion.